Welcome to Fishing with Steve D and in today's video I'm going over some requirements for labelling because there seems to be a trend on when you're fishing on the bank and we're going to dive right into that deeper right now. Now these bait containers are clip-in bait containers so they sit in the uh, pot and but the blue washer clips in from underneath and it's really really handy if you've got rock melon sweet potato cheese uh, um, anything that is a fruit based you can put them in these clip-in uh, bait containers they are the best on the market and uh, i've got a whole stack of these guys if you want any of those ones let me know uh, they're about 10 bucks each so today we're going to talk a bit more about the labeling and the requirements on the bank or if you're shore based and uh, because we're finding a trend that a lot of pots are getting confiscated uh, over the last two weeks because uh, guys um, are not labeling um, or tying their land-based pots to a stationary object now a stationary object could be a spike uh, a wood spike uh, hammered in the ground or a tent peg hammered in the ground or even a boat that's over moored overnight it needs to be moored overnight it needs to be a, a stationary object guys and um, on the pots you need to have your labels uh, just like that your surname your street name your suburb uh, and your postcode the postcode is an extra one now that they require so make sure you put your postcode on there as well so that goes on the pot always regardless whether you're on a bank or whether you're uh, in a boat now if you're uh, on the float and you're using the boat so I've got my name surname I've got my street name I've got my suburb and I've got my postcode now guys now you know my address um, don't come over for a barbecue unless you're gonna bring the snags and the beers <laughs> on the pot you need to have your uh, surname, you need to have your street name, does not need to be street number, just street name and the suburb and as well as the postcode. It needs to have that on there as well. Need to cable tie it to your pot. Cable tie it up the top here so um, if fisheries check it, they're gonna see it and they're gonna go, yep, that's okay, that's all good. Okay, so we're gonna try to um, clip in one of these bait containers just to show you. Now, they're really tight, they're really tight, but if you just pull it up, it pulls off like that. It's got the hole there, you put it in. It's got that sort of uh, locking washer. So what you do, you get one of our U-Butte pots and you take that off and you open up the pot like that. And then you take your bait container like that. And I'll try to do this without shaking too much. But I'll just put it on the side there so it's easier said, uh, seen. So then what you do, you just grab your washer. And you put it in the hole like that. And you push it in. Push it in. I hope you heard that. But now that's in there and that's not going to go anywhere. That is, I just did it on the side so you can see it better on the camera, but I would probably put two in. I put one on either side um, and probably, t uh, or more closer to the center of the pot. So that's how the pot and the clip-in bait containers work. And uh, that's not gonna come out. That's really, really, really tight, guys. So that's really, really good idea. If you're using cheese, rock melon, or park cooked half cooked sweet potato, for your red claw yabbies. So if you want any of those, let me know. They're only 10 bucks each. They are a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it because they are the best on the market and the holes on them are huge. So, which is good, which is what you want. You want them to smell and be able to get to the bait. Just gonna go over a few uh, extra tips here. Um, bait containers. So that's just an old bottle of mayonnaise and I've gone to town with the soldering iron. On the end I've got a cable tie and I then cable tie that onto the pot and cut that off and on not, and leave this one on always. So that's a really handy tip because um, 
the gabbin is doing really well because it's moving around all the time. It's moving around and it's stirring up the bait and the burley and it's catching a lot more red claw. So I would highly recommend this way. The other one here is from Kmart. Um, you buy them really cheap, $1.75, you get three or four in a packet and you just put the holes in everywhere with the soldering iron. So that's really, really handy, guys. From here, so you need a six inch uh, float, but um, I've got this bigger one, it's a groove float, and it's a good idea because you put your uh, rope in the center of it, but I've got my surname, I've got my street name, I've got my suburb, and I've got my um, postcode as well. So that's what you need to put on your float if you're in a boat. Um, we use six mil uh, rope, good quality wax rope uh, is all you need, six mil. And these groove floats are really handy because um, they're nice and compact and you can put your rope uh, around the middle of it instead of uh, more around the boat. So, uh, but this is what you need, a six inch float. Now, uh, I might bring in some of these yellow ones because yellow hopefully won't get raided because yellow is caution, um, but legally you're allowed to use the white and the yellow. Look at all these clip-in bay containers. These are really good if you're using cheese or rock melon or half cooked, half cooked sweet potato, guys. These are the best on the market. So if you want any of these uh, clip-in bay containers, they are 10 bucks each. So um, the beauty about these, they clip into your pot and uh, from underneath with the blue washer and the container stays always inside your pot. So if you want any of these clip-in bait containers, send me a message right now, guys, because they're the best on the market. Well, this goes to show you Steve's pots still work well. We have for a swim for one of them this morning, but yeah, that's what you call a load of pot. That'd be a couple hundred. So you have good pots, get Steve up for one of these things. Alright, we go and clean them. So look at that sun coming through the clouds. It's going to be a nice day today. I think there's quite a bit more blue sky than they predicted with the rain. Just turn you guys down a bit. Yeah, that's got a few more in there guys. Well, here you go, guys. Here's some red claw caught in our pots. The two pots, I think they got about 210 red claw in unnatural waters in Queensland. So, as they're declared as a pest, um, you have no bag limits. But this should inspire you guys to get out there and to get amongst them and to um, enter this free entry for the first which will be the Red Claw Yabbies Masters. So good luck guys, send in your photographs with your details and I hope you do really, really well. Red Claw often will become dormant or inactive during the colder winter months. However, good numbers still can be caught during the winter months. Over my many years, Red Claw Fish fishing I have found that for better results target the deeper water around 28 foot that tends to bring me a lot better results that is around the 28 degrees will more often produce a lot more 
red claw. Setting red claw traps in about 28 feet during the winter months will best bring the better results compared to 16 foot during the summer months. Catching red claw in Queensland during the lead up of the full moon periods of a couple of days on either side of the full moon will also see a lot more red claw being caught. Structure is also key, contributing mainly to better results, whether in the form of deep weed beds, thick standing timber, or rocky boulders, sees best results catching red claw during the winter months. Best baits seem to be dried dog or cat biscuits, half cooked sweet potato, rock melon, cheese, and even the local resident catfish. Red claw are said to be vegetarians, but I can tell you from experience that red claw love flesh, and I have seen them devour the resident local catfish right down to the bare skeleton. Also targeting the thicker timber will also bring on regular occasions the bigger red claw specimens. Especially when you team this up with cat food in the form of tinned cat food. There was no right or wrong way to catch more red claw during the winter months but these above results that I have mentioned will bring you best results I have found but be sure to experiment and let the red claw tell you what they want and what works best okay guys that bait uh, this trap had nothing so we've moved it uh, very important to uh, just move it down a bit and try a new area so here we go hopefully this bike will be better for us and catch a few more freshwater crayfish okay guys we've got another one coming up here I'm just going to show you um, how we do it nice beautiful morning Sun's coming up. Wouldn't be anywhere else for quiz. Great exercise, guys. We'll do this a couple times a week. Okay guys, we've just pulled this pot up and uh, it's got a couple of red claw, but look at all the tilapia in there. Tilapia are a noxious fish, so must kill them, not must put, you must not put them back in the water. So um, that's concerning that the tilapia are now, there's, there's half a dozen or eight of them in there. So we, we, you need to kill them and um, yeah, don't put them back in the water. So just a little point, a little tip there, very, very important folks. Okay, so we've got the one pipe, we've got a good one in there. A lot of people ask me how you do it. So we've got our cable ties as well as the clips. So we take the clips off. You now I've just got to put my glasses on so I can see. And then we've got cable ties here, guys. We just cut the cable ties off. And I'll try to get away with one, but I'm gonna to have to do another one. So it opens, make sure it's the right cable tie, because. And then that'll open it up just enough. Sometimes you've got to do three, but that'll be just enough to tip the red claw straight in the esky. Let's put it down there. That's a pretty good start, guys. That's a pretty good start. Nice and uh, good size. Okay, sorry. Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. Well, in this video, we're gonna be explaining 
a new competition called the Big Red Claw Yabbies Masters. And what it is, is it's anywhere in Australia, you can go out from today's date and catch a big Red Claw or a big Yabby. Uh, eventually down the track as we develop this competition um, nationally, uh, we will probably most likely have uh, state championships and also um, species uh, down south, up north, etc, etc. But for this first one, uh, it's going to be open to any Yabby in Australia. This competition will run till the end of the school holidays. I think it's going to be drawn on the 6th of October. That's the date it's going to run to and be drawn um, and the prizes will be awarded. I'm just going to show you what you need to do. So you need to have a, a yabby caught from today's date on a ruler and you'll need to have a piece of paper and I'll just swing you around and show you. So if I was Bob Smith you would need to have your name, today's date and the size of the red claw or yabby, uh, blue claw, whatever yabby uh, you've got. Uh, this is Australia wide nationally and we've got some really good prizes that we're developing um, as we develop this competition guys. We want this to be the next big thing that anybody can enter and anybody can win some great, great prizes. So we'll tell you a bit more about the prizes later. Um, and uh, of course I'm, I'm talking to quite a few different uh, sponsors at the moment trying to make it bigger and better than ever and uh, yeah so that's what you got to do guys you've got a piece of paper with that you got to have a yabby on a ruler or tape measure photo as well and you also will need to send in the photos of your red claw blue claw yabby on a ruler into our NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia Facebook page group. The photos of this Yabby with the on the tape measure with your piece of paper uh, with your date, your name, and the size will also need to be sent into the NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia Facebook page. Well, here you go, guys. Here's some Red Claw caught in our pots. The two pots, I think they got about 210 red claw in unnatural waters in Queensland. So as they're declared as a pest, um, you have no bag limits. But this should inspire you guys to get out there and to get amongst them and to um, enter this free entry for the first comp, which will be the red claw yabbies masters. So good luck guys, send in your photographs with your details and I hope you do really, really well. Well guys, if you really enjoyed that video, please smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel because it would mean the world to me guys. And stay tuned for our next uh, lot of videos that are coming out very soon. I'm Fishing with Steve D. Till next time, God bless.